it was like part of the show. And then when they recognized, they looked around, they started seeing people go down, and they realized this was way past that. And obviously they reacted as anybody would. Said it was complete mayhem, and people were frightened and running, and uh, it's just the whole thing is sick. It just makes you sick. But they did get out, but it was it was very, very scary for them. This was an act of terrorism. We don't know exactly what type of terrorism at this point, but it was pre-planned, and the intention was to kill as many people as possible. And I hate sure. to say it because it's against our way of life, but have, have any of your kids said, you know, they think twice about going to another concert or another venue packed with people because of the threat of something like this happening. And quite frankly, it's happened too often recently. I, uh, as a parent of three children and five grandchildren, and I preach to my kids all the time that there's no place safe. I tell them certain things they should do, but young people are young people and they have no fear. This obviously having their best, these are their, my kids' best friends, my oldest son, his wife's best friends, obviously is a life changer for them. It'll be a life changer for Brett and Jesse to be part of this. But I think that it just, you know, you you want to be able to go to these things. You want to be able to have, be able to have a nice evening. Let me tell you something. No matter where this happens, it's outrageous. But for Las Vegas, because of the kind of city we are, uh, this happened at the south end of the strip by Mandalay Bay. This is just something that no city could afford. But Las Vegas, because of the tourism that we have, this is just this is very devastating to the town. You know, Bob, let's talk about the area of the Las Vegas Strip. This is the southern mm -hmm. part of the Las Vegas Strip. Correct. The shooter was uh, found on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay, uh, yes. overlooking the, the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival. 40,000 fans, they were outside, um, yes. packed in this venue. I don't know if you've been down to the Strip in the last couple of days to, to where this was all taking place, but... You know, we're trying to figure out how difficult this would be as far as the shots that were taken. To be on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay pointing down, how difficult? Because we don't know who this person is, and more importantly, we don't know what kind of training they may have had operating a weapon like basically a fully automatic weapon is what they're saying. Well, the area of Mandalay Bay, you know, it's, it's, it's actually close to the last casino on the south end of the strip right across from the airport and right across from where there's a lot of vacant property where they've talked over the years to build something else because the airport and the height they didn't do it but and obviously they're, they're reporting as i'm sure you already know that this is a local person which is very disturbing must have some type of training you would think uh, although it was just you know, I mean, it was just as a target range. I guess anybody, no matter what level of skill, maybe could have done what he did. But this this area actually is, I mean, it's a developed area. It's it's where Mandalay Bay is one of the most beautiful casinos in Las Vegas. It's where the old Hacienda Hotel was there 35 years ago. Uh, it does bring a lot of young people. This venue has been used as area because it's one of the few areas left on that side of the strip, if you will, that would allow this type of concert. So, yeah, this was open range for this guy. And, uh, uh, you know, like I said, it's just uh, when you go from the Mandalay Bay a little further south, then you get into, like, shopping areas, and then you get start going towards residential areas. So it, this was, if, if you're going to do something crazy like this, with this crowd, it's one of the only places on the Strip where you have that kind of area for that many people. And it's probably something, and we know the shooter was a local, that yes. insider knowledge only a local would even have. Bob, if you don't mind saying so, how far are you from the Strip right now? I am probably from my house to the Strip uh, without traffic, maybe 10 Maybe 15 minutes okay. at the most, really. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you couldn't see anything out a window or anything like that. So no, you're, you're not, further not enough really, away. Okay. Not really, but I'll tell you what, there were helicopters everywhere. I mean, <sighs> I I got a call from my son, my youngest son. He said, Dad, you know, turn on the TV, and I turned it on. He, from where I live, there were helicopters all over the sky. It was just like a war zone type of thing. It was scary. 
scary as hell. It really is. You know, Bob, it's interesting that you mentioned the fact that there is some vacant land in that southern part of the Las Vegas Strip. I was there about three weeks ago. Uh, right. And it was, and you're right, there's a lot of open areas there, which, as you're saying, not just to, does this mean that it was a kind of, frankly, an, an easy target for this? You know, I'm wondering if that's why they picked this night. Why did you pick that hotel? Uh, why that area, an open air festival, if you will? Um, all of this investigators need to figure out, but it, it does, you know, raise some question marks about the timing and the location that this lone wolf gunman uh, chose.